And now, making her way to the live stream, she is the Heartbreak Kid impersonator, Lucy, for another edition of Locking It Down with Lucy. Boo, boo, boo. Ah, ah, ah. I think I'm cute. Da, da, da. I know I'm sexy. Da, da, da. I've got the moves da, da, da. that drive girls wild. You know the, you know the shtick. You know the shtick, everybody. The Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. Wait, what's the quote? <laughs> I got too excited. That's it. The Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, lays down for absolutely nobody. So there we go. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to... I only just decided to do that, like, literally 10 seconds before. I was like, oh, it's live time. Maybe I'll just muck about because it gets boring. Mucking about by yourself isn't the same as mucking about with other people, but you're all here to muck about with. Welcome, everybody, to episode show 37 of Locking It Down with Lucy. Uh, it's lockdown three, everybody. Lockdown the last crusade lock down the prisoner of your bedroom it's happening the show boris johnson clearly a fan of the show he's like we we can't let lucy uh, go back to her room uh, go back to her job so she needs to she needs to stay in her room so that she can continue doing locking it down with lucy thank you very much that's my really bad boris johnson impression oh got a little bit political here on the show that never happens i hate politics so let's see who we've got in the cheat a double at uh it is hi bits how's it going hey harry <laughs> nailed the act uh yes mr wrestlemania hello vault boy steve welcome gamer club uh ga oh, i've got two names mixed up then gamer gaming hi welcome uh chino uh yt thank you for joining blackbeard hello platinum bro seven nice to have you here pixel uh welcome welcome jonathan m hello terence hi 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 hello oh hello canada says why not adventures well hello from canada i'm saying hello to canada um thank you all for being part of the show it's time you know this is a show that uh I started uh, because I was like, you know what, I need to, an outlet for my talk. Maybe I can imp improve my presenting in, uh, skills and stuff. And now it's literally just an excuse for me to get drunk on a Thursday. Because, ladies and gentlemen, what am I drinking? Well, oh, hang on, I've got to, uh, let me just put my phone down. <laughs> um, well, you're not going to be happy with what I'm drinking because I'm drinking, uh, it's Coke, but it's the dregs of the Coke, okay? It's like the bits at the bottom of the Coke that no one really wants to drink and they sort of stay there and go a bit flat. But you know what? So it's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. So there you go. I almost. Now, just to, just so that, you know, I had some sensibilities before I did this. I was very close to going around and collecting all the dregs and making some sort of concophony of Coke because I had like Coca-Cola. I had Pepsi Cherry and Pepsi Raspberry. And if there wasn't enough normal Coke, you'd bet your uncle I was going to pour it all in this mug. So uh, we've been saved from that. We've been saved. So here we are, some flat Coke. Uh, it's okay. It's just lost the fizz. So let's, let's spice it up. Literally. Uh, so last week we had some... Uh, I don't know what... I literally just turned to drinking to uh, get through lockdown. So we've got these fine rums now that I was gifted for my birthday. What ones did people say that was meant to be the good one? I think I had I had the Dead Man Finger one. Not this brand. Well, this brand, yes, but not this flavour. Uh, so there's a Kraken and there's a Havana Club. I feel like I remember someone saying... The Havana Club, maybe? I'm just going to wait for... Uh, Pepsi Raspberry. Yes, it is the... Ah, oh, now who said that? Carlos H. My God. One of the things that I miss is a little place called The Harvester, which some people may or may not know if you're from the UK. It's a little, it's, it's like some sort of like family budget restaurant thing. My dad likes to go there because the salad bar is free. So he literally gets the table. He sits down and goes, okay, salad bar. It, it doesn't, the, the chair is not even warm before he's up for the salad bar. He, he can't wait to fill his boots with free stuff. So at The Harvester, they had this, oh man, I used to have a, a video of it. Oh, if I could pull it up, I would show you. But They've got this massive sort of like Coke dispensary. It's not just Coke, it's like Fanta as well. And you can just mix and match to your heart's content. You can say, Mr. Machine, I would like Pepsi with raspberry. And you press the button, it goes, Pfft. but then you can stop pressing the button and say, now I want lime in it. Pfft. And you just mix and max forever. It's like a slushy, but with Coke. And then the best bit is when you get the ice. So you go to the ice machine thing, you go, and it's all like little like cubes of ice that are teeny, like almost like pebbles of ice. And it goes, Pfft. and then you get it and you go, and it's bottomless. Oh, so many, many, many mixtures until oh, until your heart's content, everybody. Gosh, I never thought I would say that I miss the freaking Harvester. Because the menu was pretty rubbish, to be fair. Like, once you had, a, like, one of the things from each of the sort of selections, like the chickeny bit or the beefy bit or whatever. Like, my sister, which we will never let her forget, once time she got the ribs, pulled her braces out. So she was never allowed to have ribs again. So, right, I feel like I've seen a lot of Havana clubs 
in uh, the chat. Well, in like two. So we're going to go for that. And then next week, we will try something else. I feel like I'm on a plane journey now. Watch out. I might just go down like lost. Like, don't they all drink these little things and lost it? Yeah, I'll take, I'll take one of these. And they, they take it and they just go for it. Am I a vegetarian? No, but I used to try and uh, shake it up with uh, some vegetarian meals throughout the week. Now, this is the question. Can I open it? Oh, I can open it. Oh, harvesters here were horrible. Prison food chefs. What about little chef? Oh, it does taste strong. Do I do I do it? Do I do the pure taste? Well, you know, I'm going to be a purist. Ah, oh, why? Why do people drink this? Ah, oh, right. Oh, ah. Oh. There is, okay, I don't know how much you're supposed to do, so I'm going to put a little tip on. God knows, God knows. We're going to put the rum in the coconut and mix it all up. Oh, Jesus. I can feel it. It's like... I am the dragonborn. La da dee, la da do, la da da ba ba ba. -da. I could first do raw now, all the way to the hills. Remember that video where someone goes, Fools, who's that? And all the little ducks are trying to cross the road, and the ducks are, like, oh, and they all fall over. So, right. Welcome. Happy New Year, everybody. It is it is officially the New Year. So, yeah, here we go. Let's have a go. Uh, does it burn, though? Yes. Steady with that serving. I don't even know what the what the amounts are. I've got to go to work tomorrow. I'm drinking on the... Oh, it says 40%. Is that bad? I don't really know anything about alcohol. I can't taste it, though. It just tastes like flat coke. It's good enough for me. It's good enough for me. So, before we get into the meat and bones of the show, because today it's, it's a traditional locking it down with Lucy. It's just me flapping my gums for the next hour, talking about what's on my mind. And I feel like after the last two weeks, you know, we had a Christmas edition, we had a New Year's edition. So we're back to basics, you know. I've got a lot to update you on. A lot of the things that are... You know, wanting to express myself. Du, 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 copyright strike. Come and get me. Now, do you get copyright striked if you sing the lyrics differently? I don't know. That, that's something for the that's something for the court of law, and I'm not one of them. So, firstly, before we get into that, I would like to say, everybody, thank you so much for anybody and everybody who messaged me over the Christmas period, saying either like Happy Christmas or Happy New Year. I'm sorry if I couldn't get back to you, but honestly, I was very it was very uh, humbling for people to be like, Oh, hi, and also. A shout out to everybody as well who said that they enjoyed the show this year and it helped them through 2020. That was uh, that was very overwhelming to see that people like... Because I was like, oh, hang on a minute, I did the show to help me, but other people also found it helpful. So I don't know, thanks everybody who uh, took the time to, to, to leave a message is uh, what I would like to say. And again, sorry if I, I did not respond, but it does it does mean a lot. So here we are again, you know, 2021, back for, back for more lockdown fun. That was unintentionally rhyming. So... Let's uh, have a look at the lowlights and highlights of the week. Oh, thanks, um, Duords. Um, so, yeah, right. Uh, what am I going to say for lowlights of the week? Uh, of course, if you're new to the show, think about what your lowlights and highlights of the week and drop them in the chat and we can talk about it. So I'm going to say mine is clearly, at the beginning of the week, it was back to work, which was like, oh, God, now I have to wake up at a sensible time and go to bed at a sensible time and drag myself up and sit at a computer. But I'm going to try and be better this year and, you know, be sensible and try and work uh, realistically. Because I think last year I got a little bit too much like, there's nothing else to do. So I was talking to my friend Fran, and we're going to have to find find a reason to log off. Because it's very easy working from home to just look at the time, and it's like, oh, it's six o'clock. I, I just need to finish one more thing. So you finish one more thing, an email pops up. You look at that, you start reading that, thinking about that, and then you need to take an action on that. You see something else, then, oh, so you're still trying to finish that one more thing. You upload that, and then, and then before you know it, it's quarter to seven, and now you've overworked 45 minutes more than you really w wanted to so I'm going to try and uh, I've even put in my calendar like a log off reminder so that I don't fall into that trap again so that's something that I'm going to try and do uh, I guess the other obviously big low light of the week is lockdown three when will it end <laughs> who knows this is the beginning we I feel like not much has really changed um in terms of life with lockdown like I didn't really like after we came out of lockdown two we were in like tier two so i think i went out and did one thing in tier two but then we went to tier three tier four and then lockdown which is you can't do anything so i'm just going to try and um do things 
I don't know, to try... I don't even know when this lockdown's going to end. It feels like the never-ending lockdown. Ah, here I am, sitting in my bed. Oh, I'm not going to... I'm not going to go... It's too, it's, for a start, when I sing, I like to do it rapidly, just to get it over with. But the never-ending story, it's too, like... Blah, 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 it's too ballady. So, anyway... Moral of the story is, if there is a moral or even a story to begin with, it's just we have to sit here to, for an undetermined amount of time and hope that and hope this will all blow over. God, I hope so. So, how, what's everyone else up to? That's um, that's my thing. Uh, Dodi Four L says Lola is getting put on furlough, furlough again. Furlough, an interesting word that I'd never heard of in 2020, uh, and now obviously it's a, a word in our vernacular, much like on other words that have changed meaning, such as bubble. Uh, tear, uh, shielding. You know, when I when I was used to think of shielding, it's like you know putting your shield up in Dark Souls to make sure you don't get hit. And that was my definition. Um, low light of the week is that we are heading into lockdown in my part of Canada. Says one of adventures. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope that everybody, uh, you know, I'm gonna get to this later. Like try and think of something to do to like help pass the timey wimey, as the doctor would say, in lockdown. Because I'm hoping this will be the final one. If everyone just does the thing and we stick together. And I know it's asking a lot of like, you know, but that's the only way we can really do it is just trying our best and hopefully some, you know, something will change because, you know, this this life that we lead is mad. Um, Harry says, Lola of the week is my business exam has been cancelled. I'm sorry to hear that. Should you change the title to still locking it down? Still locking it down. Um, yes, unlike me. <laughs> Someone said, your sister has the voice of an angelic angel. Yeah, she does. Uh, I sadly do not. Uh, right, so, uh, Gafferman says, discovered your channel last week, but if it was 2021, start smelling of 2020. I have a huge backlog to pass the time. That, that, is a, that is a true point. We do have video games. I feel like we are the lucky ones. People who don't have video games don't have that third sort of media outlet. Uh, and so I hope that a lot of people have found like trophy hunting this year or last year even as like a source of something to work towards or a goal to achieve and to pass the time whereas maybe they, they wouldn't have because I don't really watch television like a lot and I, I feel like I would get really fatigued if I just sat and watched television all day because it's like it's quite a passive activity whereas video games can be on like a scale you can be passively playing a video game which is something which I'd say a telltale game was a little bit passive in terms of you're not doing too much but you're you know just pressing the button watching the cutscenes. but then you can also be really active in it in terms of like you know you're making the decisions or something that's a bit more combat heavy you're going to be you know doing the buttons doing the, doing the buttons uh, you know getting your combos right you're thinking about where you're going to go you're planning your next quest or what you're going to do like when I play an RPG it's literally like going on a holiday or something i'm there planning out my plans of like what am i going to do today and stuff like that so you know it's it's a broad activity it's also can be a social activity in the terms of like you know just hanging out with friends which we will get to in the later portion of the show uh i shall talk about oh plan and brothers i'm playing a telltale game right now well there we go uh, the prime media outlet, master of all others. Uh, channel your creativity, do the thing that I always wanted to do. Write, sing, stream, all of the above, says Vitz. Yeah, so I feel like that's a, a good, like, find something that you enjoy. And, but don't, but as long as you're passionate about it, you should, you know, have something to want to do it. And obviously don't beat yourself up about it when you don't do it. Because everyone, everyone deserves a day to just lie in their pants and play video games, right? I mean, <laughs> that's what I do. I'm always like, yeah. Uh, so highlight of the week for me was uh, at the weekend or Monday. It was best friend Bethany's birthday. Da, 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 da. So she got to join me at the grand age of 30. <laughs> so um, obviously lockdown birthday, we couldn't really do anything. But I did obviously go around to just drop her off with my dear compadre, Luna. There, so there's Luna, uh, the, the gifting, servicing dog, doing her like, I don't know, what would you, doing what? you know some dogs do to help support people in times of need she was the gift dog so we went round dropped the presents i ladies and gentlemen even baked some cupcakes for bethany and i did it all by myself i was gonna get my sister to help me but she was too busy and i was, and I was like you know what i can i can make some cupcakes damn it so i uh got the eggs you know had a little bit of overcooked in my head you know bethany had trained me for this moment she didn't know it but all along she was training me to make her some birthday cupcakes. So I was like, boop, 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 boop. And uh, yeah, and then I decorated them. I was going to do the thing where you go, Pew! but I ended up just getting a knife and just slopping it on. So um, there we go. Thank you, Luna, for your gifting services. Boop. Uh, so that was pretty fun. And then the other thing we did for Bethany's birthday was we got together 
online with a couple of other friends and we did one of those online games well not quite like that we did like um an online sort of zoom game which was the crystal maze now who here remembers the crystal maze ah how does the theme music go i remembered it for like a hot second something like that isn't it and so i uh embodied the role of richard o'brien and uh, was like come on onwards through to the thing now i'll tell you everybody that game was freaking hard so you're meant to play it with four people but we had five so we had like our friend claire she was uh, i called her the uh the mar- well what did i call her? the overseer so every player had like different pdfs they were given because they would have different roles for each game but claire had all the pdfs so she could see what everyone was doing so that was why like someone would have like part of a puzzle and you'd have to explain it to the other people and we were i think we took it took us like a good two hours and something to get to the crystal dome at the end and uh, you know catch all the things but it was very well done but it was just it was just quite difficult for for us like there was some that we breezed through but i guess there was a lot of like communication like oh what have you got on this screen and some of them were a little bit unclear on what we had to do but i would highly recommend if you're looking for something to do if you're bored of whatever it is you normally do of just staring there saying hello what's changed this month not much i've sat here what about you i've sat here too Ooh. there's something, it's something different to do you know it gets everyone talking working together and um there's no time limit much like uh the real game i definitely did get locked in well locked in but no one really got locked in so uh that was um I was like, Gavin, man, there's going to be a lot of copyright strikes in this. <laughs> That's the thing. I get them all to fight each other. Fight for your right to copyright. So those are my highlights of the week. Uh, what's everyone else saying? What is everyone else's highlights of the week? Woo! Yeah, oh, of course. It was also Vitz's birthday on the same day. Vitz also shares the same birthday as Bethany. So happy birthday, Vitz, uh, for when it was your birthday. His highlights said he had a uh, wonderful birthday with um, his friends online. Uh, awesome. Uh, yes, Crystal Mace, give me the mental challenge. They did a mental challenge and like a mystery challenge or something. Uh, right, let us uh, let me have a scroll through. So Jonathan M says, highlight of the week was that he got a job. Congratulations. Well done. Uh, good luck on your first day, whenever that is. And uh, I hope it goes well. Congrats on uh, getting the job. Highlight that the Spice Girls clip of who do you think you are with Phil Mitchell screaming. And he said, oh my God, that was so good. Who do you think you are? Actually, there will be some EastEnders chat later. So hang in there for that juicy goss. Highlight says Sean was finally getting the platinum for Beyond Two Souls. Good, good. Congratulations. Um, let's see, let's see. Um, do, 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 do. Pla- oh, what? N- Nate the Great says that he platted four guys. Seriously. Well, congratulations. That's uh, a massive, a massive achievement. Well done. Uh, Jack says, uh, might be a usual highlight, but mine is finally being here with you live. Oh, that's very kind. Well, thanks. It's good to have you here in the live ether. Hopefully this next, you know, however long of talking online can help, you know, free you from the burdens of real life. Because sometimes the real life is a burden. Sometimes I feel like one of those muggles. Uh, I, d- I don't know if you watch Harry Potter, but, <laughs> you know, like in the Ministry of Magic, when Dolores Umbridge, like, comes and she changes the ministry, and there's that, um, <laughs> that statue in the middle of all the muggles, like, <laughs> under the big pillar. Sometimes I feel a bit like, the- like one of the muggles under the pillar, <laughs> like, but it's okay, we can... Actually, the muggles never do rise up. Not that they sh- I think they should, to be honest. I mean, it would be... Un- I mean, if you found out that the wizards existed, for instance... There's not much you can do about it as a muggle. Because would you want to take on someone that could do magic? No. I think you just accept it and move on, to be honest. And you do feel upset. But then remember, remember all muggles out there. There's no mobile phones in Hogwarts. Electricity doesn't work, apparently. Wi-Fi doesn't exist. So who's laughing now, huh? You know what? You're sitting there with your ink pens, you know, writing out things for 10 hours. Where are I? I'm just typing away on my laptop, you know? I'm sending things over the internet. What are you doing? Throwing paper messages to each other. I think it's you guys. Sort sort it out. Sort it out, magical world. Sort it out. So that's uh, those are my highlights of the week. Uh, so far, uh, Moira, um, is, it, is it Moira? Says that her highlight of the week would be my coffee Yule log in the fridge. Ooh, nice. Uh, right, so speaking of speaking segue maybe who knows uh good afternoon good evening and good night as uh, the truman show would say to you mr timothy <laughs> just calling me out there it's fine i just i'm just knowledgeable on certain topics okay i mean fan or no fan i just know things sometimes uh right so clip of the week is going to be about the topics Hop-
been playing and what have I been watching because it's been a while since I've updated you and things have been happening in the media sphere. So firstly, clip of the week this week uh, relates to one of the games that I got back into playing over the Christmas time, which was Fall Guys Season 3. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I don't know why. Me and Bethany just suddenly had an, an itching to go back. So I've compiled with you uh, some short clips of my uh, my two crown wins that I managed to get. I, it's, not, it's not much in the grand scheme of crown winning, but a little highlight package for you to enjoy of my time playing Fall Guys Season 3. Feet Bethany and Chris through some of it. So enjoy! Clip of the week! Oh, there we go. Right, let's keep our wits about us. Oh, oh it's definitely not that way then. I'm so nervous. Oh, I got got. I can't remember the way as well. They're all going backwards. Oh, dang it, I fell off. I went the wrong way. What are those clowns You're up gonna to? You're going to make it. I don't know if you're going to make it. Look at these clowns. They're going backwards. Oh no, it's not that I reckon way. Oh, it's one no, of these no, no, ones. Go to... no, no, it's not no, that no, one. It wobbled. It's... it wobbled. It wobbled. I think it's this one here. No, wobbling doesn't it's matter. This one, it's this one. It's this one. I made it, Beth. I made it. I <laughs> know. Oh, I can see. Bloody hell! Oh, it's making me sick. Oh my god, I don't know. Whew. Oh, respite, respite. It's just been a new look and so. Oh my god, this goes on forever. <gasps> Oh my god, slime, doing is, so well. slime, slime is happening, slime is happening. Is slime happening? I think it's, I think it's something's happening. And it's fr I won! I won! Yes! Yes! <laughs> oh my god. I can't believe I actually did that. That was freaking me out. I remember, yeah, I remember um, this. Uh, That's because you're an old man. That's hot. <laughs> I remember listening to that at Reading Uni. You went to university? No, I didn't go to Reading Uni, but my friend did. Oh, yeah, she, she went there and I remember listening to that album there. Chris back. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. There's too many... This is you went to Reading Uni. Running through my head. Oh, my God. Oh, <gasps> Oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Lucky Lucy! <laughs> Such good friends, fucking Lucky Lucy. <laughs> So there we go. Now I saw some clips and um, some clips, some chats in the chat of people saying that they enjoyed season one and lost interest after that. Now I was totally in the same boat. Like after season one, I played a bit of season two and it just it just wasn't really the same sort of thing. But I feel like they've really upped their game for Season 3. Like There's a lot more variety in levels, especially if you didn't play Season 2. You've now got the Season 3 levels as well as the Season 2 levels on top of it. And there's just a lot of fun. There's one level that me and Bethany saw. I think we played it twice, or we, I think, or one of us played it and the other one watched it. Where there's like a penguin, and it runs around. You've got to catch the penguin. You've got to hold the penguin. You're like, my penguin, my penguin. And the person that holds the penguin the longest, like, you know, gets through out of the teams and stuff so it's a bit like the reverse tail tag um but it was a bit more fun because the penguin's cute and i'm like oh there's a little penguin so that's a good one there's a lot of cool really interesting uh new ones as well and of course you saw in that uh, clip there the um the new uh finale round which was uh, uh like roll off but more intense so yeah also i put a bit of tiptoe in there because i don't give a damn about my bad tiptoe reputation because i have like i don't know beth's not here at the moment but they always call me out for being a bad tiptoer, and I'm, I don't, now you saw the evidence was clear as day. They think I'm a pusher. I'm a pusher, Kate. I push people. No, I don't push people, all right? I keep my hands to myself in tiptoe, you know? I'm just tiptoeing my own route, you know, going my own way, you know, much like the Fleetwood Max song. You can go your own way in tiptoe, but are you going the right way? 
is the question. I, I famously, I think they wrote that song uh, about tiptoe. So I just mind my own business in tiptoe. You know, I'm the type of guy that likes to tiptoe around. But then, you know, people in the group get a little pushy. You know, when everyone's like, blah, blah, blah. and also sometimes what I like about it is the anticipation. It's who dares wins in tiptoe. Once you identify the room, you've got to stick to your conviction, stick to your guns and go for it. And uh, when you get it and it's the one, woof, it's a good day. It's a good day of tiptoe. Now, I don't mind losing tiptoe if I thought it was the one and I failed and then everyone else finds it and you just watch them going off into the distance. You're like, damn. But as long as you're true to yourself when you play tiptoe and you stick to your convictions, then, uh, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a good old game, isn't it? So uh, that's what I've been doing is playing some of that. The other thing I do like about Fall Guys um, is that it's quite a nice, easy going game. If you say, say if you're taking it seriously, obviously you're going to be like, I need to win the crowns and... I want to like you know focus and concentrate but it's also nice to just sit back and just chat to friends and because you kind of you can kind of go on autopilot especially for those early levels like dizzy heights or whatever you can kind of just do it have a bit of a chat or whatever to you know bethany and chris and then when it gets serious later on then you're like right i'm gonna focus but i just think it's a good a good game to stick on and chat to friends so uh, maybe uh you guys should uh, give it a shot you know just get on a party chat play a bit of fall guys and uh, see how you get on so the other thing that I've been playing is I decided to get onto one of my um oh what's it one of my goals uh in the backlog which is to finally get play Ghost of Tsushima is that how you say it I think I've said it I always say it a bit wrong but I was playing the game and now I'm like oh they say it a lot so I played it a little bit last year for like two hours or something and um so what happened was is I wasn't really feeling it and then this year what happened I think I was talking to a friend on PlayStation and I wanted something to play in the background that I could just you know play with my mind off and I just saw it on my dashboard thing it was ghost and I was like you know what I'm just gonna stick that on and just run around the map because it's quite pretty and I got back into it from just running around wanting to doing some question mark clearing the only issue I had with coming back to the game was that it was quite difficult to remember the combat and there was nowhere to really find out in the like menus what my uncle taught me back when i played the game in june i was like what do these things mean so i was getting like sliced left right and center and i had to in the end i had to go to watch a youtube video of someone explaining how the combat works because i just li really couldn't remember but now i'm back in i've got my stances i've got all my throwy things and uh yeah i'm enjoying uh walking around and um just just exploring it's quite nice tranquil it's a it's a tranquil game to just chill out to after work you go and do a few question marks oh and you do the fox dens and one must always always pat the fox after it's uh, taken you to a you know to a den place or oh, no the shrine it takes you to the shrine so um yeah I have I've been enjoying playing that a lot. I mean, I can't say that I'm too interested in the story, but I do like some of the characters that are in the stories. So um, yeah, that's um, oh I think it. Wait, what's going on? Oh, I don't know what's going on here. Hang on, I have to do some some mod duty. Perhaps uh, what's go? I don't know. Someone that I trust. Tell me, tell me what is going on, and I could do something. All right, I'm gonna do something. How do I do something? I've never had to do this before. There we go. I've done something. Okay. Thank you, Booker T. Thank you, Booker T. I've, um, I, I did, I did a thing in the chat and hopefully now it'll be okay. Sorry, I was too, I was too lost in thoughts about, oh, there's a spammer amongst, amongst us. Hmm. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for identifying because I just saw things were, were happening. I was like, oh dear. Uh, right. So, um, yeah, the characters I think are quite interesting in the game. Like, I think I prefer those more to the actual story quest, like helping uh, some of the people just, you know, save people or whatever. And it's just, it's just nice, simple fun. So what's everyone else been uh, playing in the chat? What's... Um, What's been going on? Uh, what have you been? Have you been going back to your backlog or playing something new over Christmas? I did try and play Cyberpunk for a bit, but I just found it quite difficult. I think I had a headache at the time, and the the font was a little too small for me to read. And I was like, oh man, there's there is too much going on. So that's when I was like, I just need, I just need peace. Uh, I do also quite like how everyone says Lord Sakai to you, which I can't not stop saying, my lord, when um when that happens because it just reminds me of that bit, you know, like so Lucius, what wand do you have my, my, my lord uh dragon dragon heart skin or is it no dragon heart string dragon heart string oh vicious vicious um 
just says crash fort relics wow well good job with that and keep up the good work you were i can't i can't even be bothered to complete crash Fort, let alone do the relics so good luck uh platinum bros has just earned the platinum in crash warp nice uh gypsy muffin says working on the cyberpunk platinum oh and Oh, a light just went off. That was very, that was very weird. I was wondering if it was one of my lights. Freaked me out. Persona 4 Golden finally got to plat it. Oh, wait, are you talking to me? Or are you talking to you, Booker T? Are you talking to me or you? Uh, we've got some Skyrim VR. Interesting. Finally, uh, caught the live show, says, I am Orca? Well, hello, thank you. Started playing Resident Evil uh, Revelations 2, says Sean. Nice, nice. I think it might be a bit more of the uh, the year of the backlog for a bit. I'm, I'm, well, I say I'm afraid, but it's great. You know, there's lots to play and not much else to do. Uh, platted, Man of Medan, and played a bit of Tsushima, says... Uh, oh, I can never say your name. Palisonoe? That was so bad. I, I, I just went off and letters just came out of my mouth. Sounds and synonyms and phonetic things just came um you're saying oh wait, i'm saying i'm good oh okay all right yes good luck Booker T. i was looking at the uh the store sale and they had uh what's it persona 5 royal on sale for 24 pounds so i was like oh the temptation i mean this would be the perfect time to play it but i say that all the time but i'd rather um i'd rather maybe play something else i, don't know, I do really want it because it's also they have the persona soundtrack on spotify now so that's good uh two wave is asking what's your next platinum so i have a few in mind i mean first of all i would like to just complete ghost of Sushima. i feel like i always have to take a take a breath to say it so i'm gonna say it correctly and then i'm gonna work on some platinums. one of the things i want to do is i kind of want to like um look at the design for how i did the road to platinum and come up with some new design ideas and stuff to to freshen it up to give it a bit and maybe change not i want to keep the format the same but because we're not going to 100 anymore it's just a random platinum i feel like the video needs a different structure so i kind of need to sit down and think about how i'm going to structure it yeah because jazz is asking when the lost legacy video is coming it is coming but once i've got the structure and the design down that's when i'll uh probably probably do it uh some justice. I don't want to just throw something out there. I kind of want to reconnect with the designer within. I hope, I mean, I'm saying this now, but I'm not really sure <laughs> uh, if that's going to happen. But I'm just kind of, you know, in in a world where there's not much to do, I want to I maybe do something that I can, you know, do or whatever. I don't know, that's falling apart. So, uh, yeah, that is, that is what I've been playing. So let us move on to what have I been watching. So... I, uh, at Christmas, watched Soul with uh, my sister, the latest Pixar uh, film, which um, I thought was okay. I mean, the funniest part, which is minor spoilers for the beginning of Soul. So if you don't want to hear the minor spoilers, guard your ears until I finish doing this. Okay, this is the symbol. This is the, this is the spoiler symbol. So at the beginning, I'm starting now, I'm starting the spoilers. At the beginning, uh, there's a guy and he's walking around and because he's got some good news and he falls down a manhole and he dies and uh my sister didn't understand she looked at me and went what happened and i was like he he died she's like what how why and i was like because he fell down a manhole and uh, she was like do we have any manholes near us <laughs> she was so concerned she was so worried that she was gonna walk outside and fall down a manhole and die and i was like no don't i mean I, what i said well, i did say yes we do have some manholes but um uh, they're all guarded mostly that like, you don't just find them in the street like that that's normally there's like a man who's standing around this is really this, this is like quite a workout to be honest this 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 is hard to do so anyway that that's the spoiler that's the spoiler uh right i'm just gonna i'm gonna have to be a tough i'm gonna have to be a tougher person in the thing what do i, I don't even know what i press i'm gonna press that i've pressed something now so there we go i thought that was quite fun uh it wasn't really my um um was it yes it was imogen i like more of the abstract well it doesn't get more abstract i suppose than the before world but um i like the ones where people are just animals you know and yeah, yeah, no, it was an interesting meaning but it just wasn't it was more it felt like more like an up and an inside out kind of tale which is a bit more like deeper whereas i like a good romping adventure um i think i've done something now uh both booker t and bolt boy steve i had a look on the um on the thing so oh I, so now the, the spoilers are done the other thing me and my sister also watched is we watched a bit of mary poppins oh 
what a character she is. I can't work out if she's good or bad. Like, as a child, I was like, oh, she's amazing. But then as an adult, I'm like, she is questionable. Like, she literally manipulates everybody to do what she wants them to do. And she just does it with a smile and a song. So, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't quite, uh, and also like, me and my sister, we were having a bit of a laugh, like trying to put like 20, 20 terms on it. What were we saying? We were saying that, um, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> Imogen was watching it and she was like, Mary Poppins is gaslighting these people. And I was like, what does that even mean? Uh, and then we were just like joking about that like, Bert's a simp for Mary Poppins. <laughs> also, Bert just randomly talks to the camera sometimes. Also, the film is two hours and nine minutes, which I had no idea, but it's got some great songs and it's just a fun old, a fun old adventure, isn't it? Also, Julie Andrews, what a legend. Dick Van Dyke, what a legend. I I'd watch that all the time. Uh, have I seen Onward or have I liked Onward? Yes, I do like Onward a lot. I like I like Wally a lot as well. I need to watch that one on my uh, Pixar watching. I need to watch the. I think next, I want to watch The Incredibles because I was never um, very into The Incredibles when I was a kid. Because I was like, Gr like human beings. This goes against everything I enjoy in the movie world. I mean, I have to be a human being every day. I don't get to be a lion or a bear or whatever. So I want to know what they're up to. So. And also, I found out, I think somewhat recently, that uh, The Incredibles was a little bit before its time in terms of the, you know, the resurgence of the... My God, why are words a struggle today? The resurgence of the superhero genre. You know, before the, the Marvel MCU came back in fashion, they were The Incredibles. And Bethany used to always say I looked like, you know, that, that girl, that violet girl. Yeah, whatever. I guess, I, I guess if I did this, I'd probably do a bit. So, uh, yeah feel like watching bed knobs and broomsticks now oh that's a, that's a great classic uh film as well so the other thing that i watched was doctor who there was a new uh new year's a new new year's episode of doctor who filmed before all this coronavirus stuff happened which was nice so that you're like oh people acting normal uh, that's a refreshing change of pace and i actually really enjoyed the episode i've been a little like so so on the new ones i'm like, not sure like some episodes could be like hit or miss but this was the first one that i felt like was just a good old doctor adventure i just like that it didn't take itself too seriously it was just like i imagine there was one bit where all the five-year-olds must be like yeah like jumping around like ah special effects are very good and i enjoyed the resolution of the story because sometimes i feel like the resolutions of these newer ones are a little bit meh they just sort of but this one was a good like they planted the seed at the beginning it came back at the end i was like very good and i enjoyed it much us so people are asking has jodie whittaker quit the role now there's no smoke without fire ladies and gentlemen who knows i mean they've not really commented but where would these rumors come from i don't know maybe someone did the fateful don't you think she looks tired dog two fans will understand that reference but i don't know it's, it is a rumor but i'm not sure my my concern is that maybe after this series they don't really know when the next series of Doctor Who will be back because of everything that's going on so would you just maybe put the show on hiatus until the 60th anniversary and then come back to it now as an actor do you want to be tied to the role that's not anything happening with it also she has been the doctor for quite a long time like she was announced in like 2017 so that is a long time but then again she has got a job which some other actors don't so maybe keep on the payroll um Chris and his writing will only ruin the next Doctor as well. We need a new showrunner. So yeah, I just, yeah, I'm not, I do miss the, the old days. But then I feel like one of those people that always said that. I, I'll never stop watching Doctor Who, but it doesn't mean that someone's that. I mean, I will say there were some episodes in the Stephen Moffat era where the resolution was done because of the power of love. And I hate that. I hate the power of love. The song too. Well, just it's just like oh yeah we resolved it because now we love each other oh, everything evaporates and everything's better like nah that was always super super dumb so very happy with this episode it was nice to get together at, as everybody and sit down and watch a good old episode of doctor who ending was a bit cringe though for the companions i was a bit like come on we can we can do better than this but you know it's doctor who. there's always got to be a bit of cringe you know i like a cheese and ham sandwich as much as the next person when you've got cheese ham then another layer of cheese too cheesy for me i'm out so that's um so that's that now the other thing i would like to speak about i think what well, i think uh capaldi even hurt his knee with his penguin running uh, actually i think uh peter capaldi and matt smith they had to get the same keyhole knee surgery on their knees because of running down corridors and having to stop sharply like that's a, a doctor who injury 
So, um, so with the UK lockdown, does that apply to TV and movie lo- uh, production as well? Is literally nothing being made traditionally as lockdown goes on, says Gaffer Man. I think it's different for different productions. I'm not really like... I don't watch that much TV to really be in the know, but I do watch EastEnders, which I'm going to talk about in a sec. And they're very much doing social distancing. And I think they have to do their own hair and makeup to just reduce the amount of people on set. But I feel like if you're on a big production, I imagine in Dog 2, they're probably taking precautions to possibly film as much as normal life as possible like you know the the tom cruise thing i bet they're all touching each other but they've probably been tested and everyone's following the strict rules or whatever to make sure that they can go ahead with the production but with lockdown three i'm not really sure what's going on at the moment i feel like they don't want to go they want to go hard lockdown but i don't think they want to go total hard lockdown to stop people doing certain jobs but um yeah it's 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 interesting how people have to get around it 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 was weird because I'm going to talk about EastEnders, which is a soap opera in the UK, because over the Christmas and New Year period, I didn't think the Christmas episode was very good, but I did think the New Year's Eve episode was very good. Like, and I think for the New Year's Day one, they formed like a bubble so that they could like, you know, really get into the scenes and stuff, which I thought really improved the scene. So why I particularly want to talk about the New Year's Eve episode, I'll just give you a little backstory. So it was an episode that was focused on one character, uh, Mick, which is played by Danny Dyer. Yeah, Safi local royalty yeah that that dude i don't know if anyone knows danny dyer i have to talk about danny dyer if i'm going to talk about danny dyer but yeah it was all about his character and um he's been suffering from some depression and other mental health issues over the course of the year due to like dramatic things happening you know soaps you know in the soap life it's no one just stubs their toe you know if they're going to walk into a table they're going to flip over the table roll over into the street you know land on a knife get run over get run over again you know it's never just a simple accident or whatever happens in in soap land so the reason i thought this episode was interesting because um it was just based on his character like there was barely any other characters in and um, what happened was is he decided to call up the samaritans uh to get help and it was just a really interesting episode of him ringing them up and just talking through his thoughts and this guy on the phone just being like mick like w- what's wrong like and obviously just doing what a samaritan sort of does and it ends up with mick sort of finally at the end realizing that something that happened to him uh was like you know something he had to confront or whatever and i thought it was a very like poignant episode with this guy on the phone you know the samaritan person just being like i'm here to talk to you blah 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 now the episode was emotional but i'm not i'm more of a cyberman when it comes to watching things i only cry when dogs die and you know? i was like oh yeah that was sad that was impactful but what did get me was afterwards i went on to reddit because i like to go on to reddit to look at what the other because i don't talk to people about extenders in my real life because no one else watches it because people moved on and watched better things so i like to you know gauge from the community of reddit of what they thought and the comment that really actually made me feel quite emotional almost well up was um I saw someone wrote a comment that said, um, that guy that Mick spoke to on the phone, how can I do that? And I was like, wow, like, even now I'm, I'm thinking about it, like, someone watched that episode and wanted to be the person that helped other people based on that. And I thought that was, that was really, um, I thought that was re- like, I don't know, I, I was just like, wow, like, the power that that did, like, because obviously, I guess a lot of, you'd probably be thinking of it the other way, like, watching the episode might make people reach out and maybe get help but this person wanted to help other people and i was like wow that just that just really got to me so that's why i wanted to um i wanted to bring it up because i thought that was that was important so uh good job eastenders good job danny dyer for uh your your services so that's everything that i've been up to what's everyone else been watching or whatever in the uh the realms of television uh Abasti saying when is the 60th anniversary so of doc 2 so 50th was 2013 so yeah it would the 60th would be 2023 which sounds like a long way away but with the world the way the things it is it might take a while to get to a normal thing perhaps i don't know but i hope david tennant comes back <laughs> and matt smith and the, all the oh that'd be so exciting um uh what's everyone else say? dr leg was the best doctor oh dr leg he died in eastenders that, that was quite that was quite sad uh highlight of the week was finally getting a ps5 oh but then he woke up i see i see uh, basically, is he still with linda stopped watching it like a year ago oh it was a bit on and off for a bit but now he, they're back you know him and l are strong um so cybermen do cry when their pets die apparently so there was this one cyberman that leaked a bit of oil now was that tears? She was doing her duty for Queen Country. Ben, Ad- ben Adam says watched uh, Cobra Kai season three this week. I don't even know what that is. Where is that? Because I don't subscribe to Netflix 
or Amazon Prime or Disney Plus. I'm just very content with my BBC iPlayer and YouTube. Maybe I'm just, you know, my friend Rohana always is like, but why are you watching such rubbish? But I don't care. I literally spend maybe like an hour or two tops watching television because I'd rather be playing a game. Was watching Stage though, which is David Tennant and Michael Sheen. That's pretty fun. That's only like 15 minutes. Uh, it's on Netflix, Cobra Kai. It's a karate movie. Karate. Oh, I've never watched Karate Kid. Um, I don't really watch TV, t TV, but I watched Cobra Kai. Rewatch The 100. Sean Slayer. I really, really, really want to watch season seven, but I don't even know how I'm going to at this point because some streaming service is probably going to snap it. I might just have to be old school and buy a DVD. Heavens to Betsy. Buying a DVD. Who'd have thunk it? Uh, so, yeah, right. Let's do um, some Q&A. For those of you who are so inclined, you may... Drop a question and I shall answer it. Uh, I'm just going to take a, a swig of this drink, which I've rapidly almost finished. Also, Sonic and Co. <gasps> Why does that happen? Why does drinks just suddenly, like, you know, bubble up? Right, sorry, everybody. I'm going to have to clean this. So I'm going to have to get incredibly close. Because I I don't have, like, a tissue. So I'm going to have to just use my T-shirt to mop up this why is that it just literally spat up like a volcano or something sorry bear with me there we go done um right so <laughs> let's see what's going on in the chat uh ka lots of numbers and letters fletcher's creek sir ps says i binged all your youtube videos oh i mean well not youtube the uncharted videos well thank you very much that actually leads me to a question that i want to ask you guys uh what's your worst game of 2020 man of medan without a shadow i was going to think about it and then it came to me a hundred percent man of medan i went and played it at bethany's house for her birthday last year and um we were like half of the way through it and we all kind of looked at each other and went is anybody actually enjoying this? And we were like, no, no, you are, are you? And all of us were like, no, no, um, <laughs> we're not. So uh, we, it was, it was such a weird game. We are going to try Little Hope. I don't know if you, does anybody know out there? Can you play Little Hope online with each other? Because um, I heard that's like better in certain aspects, but worse in other aspects. But we, we like doing those. Um, you mean the second game? Um, yeah, the one... That came out. I thought Little Hope was a bit better as Booker T. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I want to. I want to give it. Um, you can play it online with each other. Oh, thank you, Sly. Um, Sly Glass Fox. Okay, we'll have to do that. Me and Bethany and Chris, as we do the thing where we assign each other characters. But I do remember feeling like in that game something that other people did could get your character killed off, which felt a little unfair. And then at the end, it was just like madness happened, and the payoff didn't feel justified. Like with until. It, do you know what it felt like? It felt like they saw the success of Until Dawn and were like, how can we do this again, but it's shorter, and then just sticking in all the same kinds of story beats, but very condensed. So you could kind of, kind of work out where it was going in a weird way. like, oh. And then at the end, everyone was like, blah, 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 blah. and in the end, we just ended up getting everyone killed by accident and only two people survived. And everyone was a jerk. I didn't really care about any of the characters. Whereas in Until Dawn, I thought the characters were really well done. Like there's that guy that's played by Brett Dalton. I think that's his name. At the beginning, he's like a right jerk. Like, he's the proper, like, jock guy that doesn't really care about anybody else, just wants to, you know, get Jessica or whatever. Like, what does he say? I always like the quote where he's like, has to make the fun, goes, uh, looky, looky, who's going to fire up some nookie? Or whatever he says. But then by the end of it, he's totally turned around because he's had to become this sort of, like, more heroic character. And all that, that bravado that he had at the beginning is washed away because he really does want to try and help everybody else out. And um, he became one of my favourite characters, whereas at the beginning I, I hated him. And there were other characters as well that you felt for. It was only really Josh that was like... But then Josh had his own reasons. So that's why Emily, best, uh, uh, best Until Dawn character. Interesting. I'd forgotten about Emily. Oh my god, Chris! <laughs> oh, who's that? Matt! That's what she'd always do. And then she'd be like... I mean, there were certain parts of that game that were uh, <coughs> annoying. Uh, Savita Rich, hello. Thanks for popping by to say hi. Uh, like Steve Harrington from Stranger Things. Oh, my God. I love Steve. I um, Everybody. Controversial, because everyone's coming out of Steve lovers now. I like Steve in season one. What does that say about me? I don't know. <laughs> it's probably really bad. But I was always team Steve and Nancy through and through. I don't, I just don't really get the Jonathan connection, like, meh. so, 
team, team Steve here, best baby babysitter in the business. Um, she was awful, uh, but which was enjoyable. Uh, wait, I thought you didn't have Netflix. That is true. No, I did the uh, the trial, and I just binged all of Stranger Things, and then that was about it. Uh, oh, Lucy, I was wondering, if you had your own game, what would your trophy list be? Any ideas? Now, I would throw in a good mix. Now, if I was going to... I think the, the way to answer this question is I would like my trophy list to be a 6 out of 10 or a 7 out of 10. I don't want it to be a walk in the park, okay? Uh, I want it to have some element of challenge where you're going to have to really sit down and, you know, focus your mind on something. Now, it depends on what this game is. I don't know what the game is, but let's just say we're going to have a nice balanced trophy list. I'm going to have some trophies that are to do with the story, okay? Because it's always nice to get some of those gimmies, you know? You want to feel like you're making progression in the story. So I'm not against those. Put in a couple of those, get a nice gold trophy at the end of completing the game. Boom, everybody loves that. At least then you prove that you beat the game. Now, collectibles, interesting. I would probably have to put a few in there, but not an outrageous amount and uh, just just enough. Just enough to just, you know get by. As long as they were interesting. And I, I'm so over audio log books. You know what the other thing I'm over with in video games is tracking things in detective mode. Like, oh, God, what is, what is fun about staring at the ground and going... But this is literally what you're doing. Let's pretend this is this is the ground, everybody. Now, obviously, I'm not to scale with the ground, so pretend I am to scale. It's literally good. Well, not quite like that, but you know what I'm saying. Like you're just running with your head to the ground, just staring at someone's footprints or someone's smell tracks. It's just it's boring. Escort missions, yeah. That's 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 a time old classic. It's kind of just like certain things like that, or just searching go through the search area yeah it's like oh god oh, oh, who cares so that's that's what i want out anyway so i'd have collectibles i would also now no multiplayer trophies now let's say my game has to have multiplayer i'd put that in a separate list if if i had to have trophies just and also my multiplayer trophies would be to dabble not to complete or grind to a level now if i do make a game and uh, I do make grindable, horrible multiplayer trophies, then somebody smite me down and show me this video and slap me with a fish so that I can remember the true meaning. I don't want to forget. I don't want to forget this. I hope I wouldn't be persuaded. I'd like to think that. But yeah, make sure that happens. Uh, and then I would probably put some kind of challenge, a challenging trophy where it was like you had to do a test of your skills. So it's something that you're going to have to sit down and really practice and try. But then when you do get that trophy, you're going to feel accomplished. Boom. That's that's my list. I hope that answers your question. Um, Bloodborne has a very good challenging list. Yeah, something like that, you know, with a few bits and pieces. Um, Uncharted 4 had a decent multiplayer trophy. It's not too hard, but not too tedious. Exactly, something like that. Which game has the most outrageous collecting in it? Ubisoft games? They're literally, you know, collectathons in themselves. You got just drive around getting hundreds of meaningless items. Like... I'm just thinking of, like, Watch Dogs. You have to go around and get, like, what? The songs? The landmarks? The s something else? Oh, yeah, the, the tags? The... What what else was there? There was some other obviously, QR codes or something. Assassin's Creed, you're doing all those question marks. You're picking up flags. You're picking up feathers. You're picking up God knows what off the street. It's just everything and everything. Far Cry. I mean, at least Far Cry, you don't have to collect everything. But there's those relics. There's the towers. It's a whole, it's a whole big thing. Yeah, Far Cry trophies aren't too bad, as Ben Adams has just said. Uh, may most LA Noir trophies are easy if you use a guide. Oh my God, LA Noir, what a game! My saddest thing about LA Noir is it's such, such a good map, but it's so put to waste. Like nothing is happening in the world unless you're doing the actual mission. And there are there are like kind of like random crimes and stuff, but it's it's a crying shame the the level of detail that go that went into recreating LA in the 1940s, whenever, and it's just a facade of just emptiness it feels like it feels like a backdrop from like a movie set nothing is it's nothing's going on but i wouldn't say alien noir was a hard trophy if someone was asking about that it's just um see i would i played the game without following a guide someone said you had to follow a guide which is quite true just that you can get everything that um you have to get certain things without making mistakes whatever because i saw comes up yeah i saw you with the thing oh okay you're telling the truth i'll sit back down again what is your favorite trophy list i like uncharted um lost legacy that was pretty fun um, what else? I've got some other ones. I like the Fallout ones, apart from the karma-related ones or the the broken, different uh, story mission things. I don't like when you get locked out of something either. I don't like difficulty trophies. 
and I don't like branching paths where it's like, oh, now I have to make a save and do this and come back. Highly irritating. Um, what else? Uh, at least RDR2 collectibles are fun in a way. What are the collectibles? Oh, there's the... Uh, Hang no 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 I can't I can't agree with that statement because collecting the bones boring collecting the dream catchers boring collecting the something else is boring the, the amount of times I went round and round and round that map collecting rubbish but because I couldn't collect it all at once it was like doing the Tour de France sometimes I was like I've been here and collected two other things from this same location but I didn't realize the other thing was here too very annoying. Are you going to finish the Dark Souls 3 Platinum? Maybe someday, James Moody. Maybe. Uh, did you enjoy the uh, Resident Evil trophy list? Actually, that was really good. Uh, the Resident Evil trophy list. That oh, I love sinking my teeth into a bit of that. I like to play at least one Resident Evil game every year. I feel like that's going to be my thing. Because there's, there's a lot to choose from. In terms of that, I haven't played many. Actually, I played two last year, so that broke the trend. But I'm going to play one this year. Now, do I play zero? Or do I play four? That is the question. Mm-hmm. Uh, Spider-Man, yeah, Spider-Man has a good list. Uh, I'm not sure about Cyberpunk's list. I've not really looked at it properly. I'm trying to platinum uh, Ratchet and Clank, but the disco weapon is killing me, says Paul. Oh my god, I remember doing that. It took me two and a half playthroughs to get that trophy. I literally just wrote down every enemy that I killed and did like a, almost a whole half of a playthrough just killing everything with a disco ball. Ugh. Definitely four over zero. Uh, says Ben Adams. Resident Evils are my favourite franchise. Play Resident Evil 4. Now, do you think they're going to remaster it? Do I play the original or wait for the remaster? That's the question. Because I, I see a lot of people saying that Resident Evil 4 is their favourite Resident Evil game. But but at the same time, some of the purists are like, oh, that's when it changed. So I'd be curious. Spider-Man collectors are boring. No challenge to find them. But it's fun just swinging around the city. So you can't really begrudge that. Uh... Oh, which game did you enjoy more, Fallout 4 or The Outer Worlds? The Outer Worlds by loads. I was so much more invested in The Outer Worlds. I liked The Companion so much more. Do you know what got me about Fallout 4? They would always... President Gravy, as I like to call him, also known as Preston Garvey, I believe. He would always moan about something happening. He'd be like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go find out. I was sent to the same hospital three times on, on three separate occasions and i was like i cannot believe this i can't believe i'm going through the same thing fighting the same mu super mutants going to collect whatever it was from the same exact room three times i know the hospital i'm, I'm looking at it in my mind i'm like Did -did -did? you go up that bit and then you go up that bit and then there's a room there's a key card i was i was so i was so the third time i was like you have you cannot you cannot be serious so, yeah, The Outer Worlds, definitely. Very intriguing uh, game, and I should probably pick up the DLC at some point. Um, right. I have a question. Oh, wait, hang on. How stressful was the Resident Evil 3-hour run? I assume it gets easier uh, after you play it on repeat, but I have problems with the game on normal. Now, how did I do that? I felt like uh, when I went for that one, I had already, on a previous playthrough, got very close to getting it without meaning to. I'd done it in 3 hours and 10 uh, minutes and I was like oh that's interesting so if I knuckled down I could definitely do it so you just got to know where you're going so I played it with a guide open so that I knew exactly where I was going I was making no mistakes and I think I did it with about three minutes to spare you have to watch my uh, road to platinum 100 video on it I think I go into a bit more depth and detail about my plan and how I did it so check that out so now I'm going to talk about Oh, man, I've got a lot that I want to talk about. Maybe I have to talk about some of this uh, next week. So me and my friend Fran, I just want to see this is in my mind at the moment. A lot of people talking about Uncharted in the uh, in the chat. We were looking at playlists and stuff because PlayStation makes their own sort of music playlist based on certain games. And I was browsing them because I was interested. Like, what kind of songs are PlayStation recommending that you listen to whilst playing Fall Guys or Death Stranding, for instance? I was just curious. But then that got me thinking... What playlist would you make if you were going to make an Uncharted playlist? So I was thinking about it. We, me and Fran were chatting about it. And then we got into, no, no, no. Not what playlist you should listen to while playing Uncharted. What would be the playlist that Nate and Sully would make when they go on an adventure? Okay, so hit me with, with, with what you think. So I'm, this, is, this is the story that I've concocted in my head. I'm imagining it's somewhere in between Drake's Fortune and Uncharted 2. Nate and Sully... 
they're in their seaplane, they're getting on a jeep, and uh, so he's like, hey kid, <laughs> I found out this deal going down in uh, Paraguay, uh, but uh, it's going to be quite the road trip, so I uh, put together a mixtape. Oh, mixtape, Sully, come on, you always only put your songs on it. And he's like, kid, these are the classics. And then he puts the mixtape in, and what songs has Sully put for his adventure? Well, not just Sully, I'm sure that Nate's probably put a few songs in there, but I imagine that because when Nate was a kid, he probably didn't have music rights in terms of like, you know, when you're the older person, you make the music. So he probably likes a bit of whatever Sully listens to because it reminds him of uh, their impressions. <laughs> Thanks for the, uh, the, the, uh, the Sully uh, impression uh, uh, thing. So I'm thinking that Sully, he sits there, okay? He's in a room, he's got his cigar, a little bit of whiskey or brandy or something. Lights are dimmed. What's he listening to? What's old Sully? What's old Victor goddamn Sullivan listening to that he would put on a mixtape for him? Uh, and I think so. What? Um, BG staying alive. Joker and the Thief. Now this is the funny part where I don't actually know any of these songs that people are recommending. Now I'm thinking like, is he a Bruce Springsteen type type of guy? Is he gonna? I don't even know any Bruce Springsteen songs to be honest. Sully would listen to Nina, uh, Nina Simone, Bill Withers. A mixtape has a uh, Barracuda on it. I don't know what this Frank now, Frank Sinatra definitely. Do you think he's like start spreading the news? Do Come on, kid, these are the classics. Uh, and then him and Sully are, are both in the car. I wanna be a part of it. You're, it's your big kid. New York, New York. And Nate's like, yeah, it's up to... And then Sam's like, oh, hey, don't forget me. Get out of the car, Sam. No one invited you on this trip. Uh, Fortunate Son would definitely be on there. Smooth Jazz. Yes, he would definitely listen to some smooth... Like... I don't know. What does smooth jazz sound like? Like... No, that's um, that's not smooth jazz. That's uh, George Michael. George Michael. That's <laughs> George Michael. Said I'm never gonna dance again. I'm thinking about Catherine Milo. I wonder what she's doing now. And if she'll come and take Nate's ring, though it's only been 15 years since we were in Columbia. Or are they? Uh, no, actually, they're in Cartagena. Anyway, you know where that was going. Maybe some Dean might. Oh, Sully likes some country. Well, uh, oh, what about um, Tom Holland being cast as Nathan? Meh, whatevs. <laughs> I don't care. Can you imagine? Nathan and Sully listen to Bug Snacks like, Hey, Sully, I've been playing something and it's got a real good soundtrack to it. Also, Nathan and Sully exclusively only listen to cassette tapes, okay? So they've always got a pencil with them, so just in case uh, the tape runs out. And they're like, Boop, 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 boop. Oh my god, they wouldn't do Bug Snacks, they would do Treasure Snacks. Kind of treasure and kind of snack. Try and catch them in your pocket. That doesn't rhyme with the song, but it will give you money. There's a treasure over here. Maybe that will pay for beer. <laughs> but anyway, Beatles for Sully. Ooh, yeah. That's a good shout. That's a good shout. Your George Michael's little Shakira in it. Said I'm never gonna dance again. Guilty feet. I've got no rhythm, but my hips don't ever lie. I think I've drunk too much of this coke now. It's gone. It's gone straight to my head. It only took an hour. Um, oh god, a playlist of that? No, don't, don't. Um, I have one active imagination. This is what I think about late at night when I'm trying to sleep. I'm like, what would Nate and Sully be doing on a road trip? Now, also, I was saying to Fran because I like to hate on Elena, even though I do really like Elena, but I just didn't find it quite enjoyable to think about, you know, kind of like annoying Elena in the middle of Uncharted Three to Uncharted Four. She would listen to like really like oh like what's the word I'm looking for like music that no one's heard of because she's like so vintage or whatever and I'd be like come on Elena don't try and kid me we've seen you on the dance floor Elena you do like to bust out a little bit of dancing queen okay but then I know when you're doing your J job like oh yeah I like listening to this traditional folk music shut up Elena get get with the program <laughs> nothing nothing is wrong with a hipster perhaps exactly elena would be all over that but she does but then fran was like cool cool it lucy elena plays crash bandicoot never forget and i'm like no never forget she has sick crash bandicoot stick skills lest we forget so elena uh, to, to be honest i do actually really like elena like i enjoy hating her in uncharted 3 and the beginning of uncharted 4 but uncharted 4 like the ending bit makes me absolutely love elena and i can't see nate at being with anybody else oh god i'm just thinking about the end bit where you get a funny idea of romantic oh 
gosh. Oh, if only uh, I could go on a, a rip-roaring pirate adventure to find my true love. Oh, one could dream. <laughs> but then be str- strung up by skeletons close to death. Oh, what a, what a story, eh? <laughs> What's your favourite Uncharted game? It is, of course, Uncharted 4. Now, what about Chloe? What's Chloe up to? Now, what's Chloe and Nadine... Oh, that's the other question. What's Chloe and Nadine listening to on their trips? Okay, Team Bestie now. Having got the Tusk of Ganesh, they've got this, like, you know, budding friendship where now they're going to go off and, you know, help the museums around the world because they're such lovely people now. They're like... Museums like, oh, no. Um, bring, bring, bring. Miss Fraser. Uh, hi. Hi, yes, it's me, Chloe, and Nadine. Oh, don't don't forget me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're from the Museum of uh, Museums. The, the Museum of Museums, because we are the museum. And uh, we're just having a, a bit of trouble with our stock lately. And we were just really hoping that you could come and uh, bring us this treasure that's lost somewhere. We would pay you a good finder's fee because we just really want to bring... We want to bring people back to history. We're on the case. Dun, 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 dun. To get the jeep ready, Nadine, we're going on a trip to find treasure. And Stan's like, uh, hey, I heard you were going on a trip. Need anybody to uh, pretend to not be working for you? And then get the... No! <laughs> Do your own trip. Boop. And off they go on a rip roaring adventure. They'll be listening to... Do you know what I can imagine? Uh, they'd be in the car, like, you know, in Saints Row, when they go, when our opposites attract, and they sing the different parts to each other. Oh, I want to get duets sung by them. I like it. Like, that's, that's what I imagine. Uh, your part, Nadine. I like, oh, and then Nadine will be singing about zoology because she loves a bit of, like, she knows a lot about zoology. Um, so, yeah, do us. Sorry, I've just realised that I've just gone into my own little world and just forgotten anything that's happening in the chat. Jason Derula. Oh, who, what does he sing? He sees something I don't know. Nathan would probably listen to ACDC. So you imagine they're going, nur, 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 nur. the ice of spades down the, we are going through the jungle. Someone's behind them trying to like blow up their car. Like, hey, Sully, it's time to turn the mixtape to action explosive. What soundtrack is the Uncharted movie going to have? Is there going to be music? I mean, there's always music. Now, are they going to put the Uncharted music in the game? That's a question I've never even thought of. There's got to be at least a little bit of the, you know, what is that thing? The, the, the flute thing? The sort of like, it sounds like it's being played through a stick of bamboo. I know it's a real instrument probably, but it's like... Do you know the sound I'm talking about, that... It's 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 quite, you know... Uh, oh, well, hello, little devil. Welcome back. Um, they have two for us. What's that? I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Monkeys. Yes, she liked, and she knew stuff. Oh, yeah, maybe they'd, they'd just sing... Um, the Jungle Rhythm from Jungle Book 2, that 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 famous movie that I'm sure everyone's watched. Feel the Jungle Rhythm. Anyway, I feel like I've just been babbling for ages. It's, t- it's seven past nine. Um, so thank you for all your... Uh, the real question is, is what song would the Uncharted characters sing at a karaoke in a Yakuza game? Gaffer Man, asking the serious questions that we need answered. Hello, Dan. Um... Oh my god, let's 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 park this conversation. Let's park this conversation for now and I'm gonna write it down. We're gonna come back next week. What song would all the Uncharted characters play or sing in karaoke? Anyways, me and Fran are gonna make this Uncharted playlist. Uh, we will let you know and I'll post it next week or whenever it's ready for you guys to enjoy. Oh yeah, what's Charlie up to? Tim, I, w- I wanna know. I love a bit of Charlie Cutter. He's brilliant. Anyways. That uh, about wraps up today's episode. I was going to ask you uh, if anyone had any goals for 2021, but uh, I don't know. I feel like the uh, the episode has uh, definitely gone on. I mean, I've bought this. I bought some trainers so that I could do some proper walking and maybe do some running or something, you know? Because um, that's what people do now. People just run around in the streets to do stuff. So that, that might happen. <laughs> Who knows? I'm going to try and reconnect and try not to do too much computer stuff because it's time to, I don't know, find something to do. I don't know where this is going. Right. Get more platinums. Yeah, I'm going to try and plan um, what's going on. So I'm going to now cross off another day of lockdown. Another day of lockdown. I have a new work from home countdown um, at the start. So old countdown reached its end. New countdown at the beginning so here we go it's just another day of a lockdown oh i wonder how far we'll make it on this page honestly i feel like 
I, uh, I'm not sure if going back to the office this year might even happen, sadly. Wah, wah, wah. Goal for 2021 is to get more platinum, says Statical. Very good goal. Um, Charlie will listen to Queen. Oh, brilliant, yes. All we hear is Radio Gaga. Uh, so yeah, my goal is probably to go... Well, you know some of my goals that are in the... Um, uh, in my 2020 wrap up video I guess personal goals is I'm going to try and improve my work life balance you know be more zen with myself and set to myself strict boundaries of work time and non work time and save some creativity for me maybe I'll do some real life making or something I don't know the future is endless or possible get a crown in full guys yes definitely I'm going to try and do that what is trainers what is trainers baby don't hurt me no more I'm just going to finish off this drink oh well, there we go everybody that concludes another edition of locking it down with lucy thank you so much for hanging out and being here in the stream in the chat for dropping your thoughts comments and just anything else that you've uh, done today whilst i've been doing whatever i've been doing i don't know i feel like i've talked a lot i feel like a good i feel like it was a good talking session everybody i feel relieved of my brain I think I might be able to sleep. Go to sleep now. Because last night I was like, thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. Lots going on. But now, I've let it go. Ah, oh, so, um, right. Um, good. Got here for the last minute. Well, you know, that's, that's what happens sometimes. So, enjoy your week going forward. I hope you have a great one. And I shall catch you next week for another edition of Locking It Down with Lucy. Keep it locked to the channel. And I'll catch you cats on the flip side later, alligator. I might not drink next week. <laughs> it's, it's too much I'm flipping hot alright adios amigos bye beep, 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 beep. waving ba, 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 ba. <laughs>